What's embarrassing about that? It's great. Batman, Wayne Family Adventures, still going, still strong, still fun. We're gonna check in on it because not only is it keeping on, keeping on, but it's also become a place where there have been some really strong character moments in work. In some cases, far stronger than parallel moments happening in the traditional comics. There's very stark comparisons to be made in some points. So I guess, warning, comparisons will be made in this video. We're gonna take a look at a couple of those, some things that just tickled my fancy as well, some things people wish were different, and just in general, chat about the Wayne Family Adventures because why not? It's been in a minute, time of recording. I find it really interesting to see the differences in approaches across mediums. I think it's interesting at least. Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics from music comics new and old to history to anecdotes truly wherever our whims take us. I'm Sasha and oh where to begin. Batman Wayne Family Adventures is a result of a joint venture between Webtoon and DC Comics. This being the first collab with the first episode being released in September of 2021. Due to the success of this one, many months later in April 2022, more were announced. They've started rolling out with Vixen, which we also talked about. Batman and Wayne Family Adventures comes out weekly on Thursdays, time of recording. It has inks by Starbright and is written by CRC Payne, which has been the team for the duration up to this point. So the series is incredibly tonally consistent. It is a slice of life, largely comedic series about the daily lives of the Bat family, filtered through the lens of their being vigilantes. At my time of filming, 41 episodes have been released before the cut. So those are the ones you can see without having to use coins. So those are the ones that we're gonna be chatting about. Some of them, not all of them, but those are where the chats are gonna come from. The most recent episodes, TOR, let's just abbreviate it, Better and Brighter Parts 1 and two actually focus on Tim and Bernard, a pairing we've been tracking on this channel. This since the Tim is bisexual arc, just to see how it ended up being handled and if it actually did anything for Tim's character, who had been largely thrust into the shadows and left in limbo pretty much since the ascension of Damian Wayne, because there was grandiose talk about how this was gonna revitalize Tim. Tim is set to be Robin again for the first arc of Chip Zdarsky's run on Batman in late 2022, so there may be many more Tim moments incoming, hopefully maybe addressing the whole I want the mantle bombshell casually dropped into Batman Urban Legends despite him previously saying he didn't. Tim is also getting a dedicated Pride one-shot aside from a story in the anthology. The former not out yet, time of recording. So lots of Tim incoming. I like me some Tim. No, seriously, when they started releasing his series in trade, I was collecting those. They're all on the other shelf over there. In the mainstream comics, this development has been largely ignored except for short stories and anthologies, including a story in DC Pride, which serves as a strong comparison point to highlight the strength of the character work going on in Wayne Family Adventures. Better and Brighter showcases these two during a date. I'm having flashbacks to Batman Urban Legends where they promised there would be a date, and then the next time they showed them, it was after the date. At least DC Pride shows flashbacks to dates. Tim and Bernard are going on a date when their hands brush together. Tim gets trapped inside his own head and panics. I really wanna hold his hand. Should I go for it? But what if he doesn't want me to? Oh God, did I totally misread that? And what if it's just an accident? Does he even like holding hands? Tim, everything okay? Yep, all good. Oh look, we're ready at the movie theater. Tim later ends up going on patrol and ends up talking about this incident and his relationship with Batwoman. Being with Bernard makes me so happy. I love spending time with him, but every time I try to make a move or even think about making one, I start second guessing myself. This scene is doing a lot of character work with the concept of Tim and this relationship. It's simultaneously treating it like a regular relationship with insecurities that one can identify, but it's heightened by the knowledge that this is Tim's first relationship with a boy. So some of the insecurities are also coming from there. His lack of certainty about his orientation as he is newly exploring it and also how to date a boy. Is it different? Is it not different? It's treating it like a journey in contrast to just dropping the knowledge out there and then skipping ahead to the everything is is fine. It's all perfect now. Let us not speak of this again, except in anthologies. I mean, is dating guys anything like dating girls? I am so not the person to ask that question to. She does say she's there to talk though, which he takes her up on. I keep overthinking things, Kate. I don't know if he's happy with the pace we're moving at or if he wants us to move faster or slower. Or I don't know. Why do you think you'll mess it up? I always mess it up. Kate doesn't contradict him here. Instead, she talks him through how he can take steps to make this relationship work, namely communication. It's a good moment. It doesn't invalidate his feelings, allows him to have them. It also allows you, the reader, to take a mental stroll down failed Tim relationship lane. Oh, almost as dangerous as the alley the Waynes walk down. You're a great detective, Tim, but this doesn't have to be a mystery for you to solve alone. Tell Bernard what you're feeling. Let him help you. He's not a mind reader. Wait. He's not a mind reader, right? There's an interesting moment of character development here as well, where Tim mentions that everyone has been supportive, but he feels like he can't talk to them about everything. Just from a him perspective, but he feels different with Kate. It's a nice organic way to create a bridge between the two characters, and whether or not the reader feels it's fair for him to feel that way, it makes sense based on what's going on with his character that he might. So Tim talks Bernard, and they hold hands. Also, don't think I didn't notice that their outfit colors make up the bi flag. I see you. It's cute, which is what this final moment is going for, and it really showcases that this is 
a journey for Tim, and also this is a relationship that he really wants. And this is just two chapters. There are lots of other Tim chapters, like him rebuilding his relationship with Dick after feeling cast off for Damien. You get to see a bunch of different sides of Tim here in the series. There's even a chapter where him and Stephanie have a big heart to heart about her feelings of inadequacy in a scene that allows them to acknowledge that they were together. Something some comics now seem afraid to touch. Jokes aside, Stephanie and Tim are set to have some kind of encounter in the upcoming DC Tim Pride special. We'll see how that goes. It's been over six months, so maybe they found a reason why he broke up with her, because initially he broke up with her off panel. We'll see. Time of recording. These chapters, 40 and 41, stood out to me in particular because time of recording, I had just read DC Pride, which contains a Tim and Bernard story. I ended up comparing them because there's so little Tim and Bernard content out there. Now, of course, you can prefer one, you can prefer the other, you can like both, you can do whatever you want. The story special delivery stars Tim as he rushes to get to Pride with a cake that he has for him and Bernard, but he has to stop some villains along the way. Will the cake make it? All the while, he's thinking about how awesome Bernard is, but it ends up coming across as rather generic, as if Bernard could be anyone. One, basically. It was confusing how you made me feel. I wanted to find out what was coming next. When we went to the amusement park at Burnside, it was the thrill of a lifetime. And not just because of the roller coasters, it felt like something big was happening. Something important. Hey, also this roller coaster date is now their first date, so we got to see it flashback in a panel. And then Tim says that Bernard threw up on his shoes and that there have been ups and downs, but we're just gonna have to take his word for it because we're not going to see them. He says it hasn't been boring, it's been fun. This story also has a hand holding moment, but there's no insecurity in Tim here. He even says Bernard always makes him feel secure. He's just completely confident, and this is presented more as a fantasy relationship. The cake gets there, but it's a little smushed. But Bernard doesn't care, because in the main verse, Bernard never cares what Tim does. Getting stood up more than if he did, Peter. Parker, but having zero negative reaction. In many ways, he ends up coming across as a perfect boyfriend stand-in who you could replace with pretty much anybody else, because although Bernard does have character traits, both some new ones that they gave him and some ones when he first existed in the previous can as Tim's friend we went to school with, they rarely bring those forward. The biggest difference between these two stories is the webtoon is exploring how being bisexual is impacting Tim, how it's affecting him in his relationships, whereas the pride issue feels like what's important is that Tim is bisexual, not how it truly impacts him. It comes off more like a PSA, which may be the point since Pride is a celebratory issue, so it may just exist to showcase a series of happy, uncomplicated moments. The webtoon ended up doing a lot with how few panels it has by contrast. The webtoon really made you root for Tim and Bernard specifically because the highlight was on how much this relationship really meant to Tim. In the main DC verse, they have no obstacles, and it's sometimes treated in an almost tokenized way rather than as one of the other relationships. As a result, it sometimes feels as though it doesn't have as much depth as it could, though of course miles will vary. For some some just seeing the relationship will make them happy, while others will still want him to be more explored as a character and the relationship and beyond, which may be coming soon. It's really possible. Look at what was done in just two chapters of a webtoon. No matter what we think of the direction of Tim's character, do we all agree that Bernard, even if he needs some fleshing out, is a better boyfriend than Jay Nakamura? Or am I canceled now? Are you not allowed to dislike Jay? I'm sure in some corners of the internet. Jay worries me. No one tells me who to like or not like. Another really solid two-parter that stood out to me in light of a main verse series I am also reading were chapters 32 and 33, all seeing parts one and two. Chapters that were focused on Cassandra Kane and her ability to read people, and this because of her assassin's upbringing and the abuse suffered at the hands of her father, and how that impacts her relationship with Babs and Steph. This, of course, made me think of Batgirls, the series starring Stephanie, Barbara, and Cassandra, all as Batgirl. And it's also trying for a more comedic tone, though the action is slightly heavier. That series has jokes every two seconds. Situational, characters are making them, the narration boxes are making them, the editor's boxes are making them. Sass. Sass everywhere. But there are also still attempts to deliver character moments in that series. In a review of that series, I brought up the idea that maybe if some jokes were dialed back, the emotional moments could land a bit better and make all the characters feel more weighted, and that there could be more callbacks to their histories. All of that was before I caught up with Wayne Family Adventures. I was a little behind. And these two chapters demonstrate all those points amazingly. In this web Soon, all of the women have their own solo identities, and Babs is Oracle. We open on Cassandra and her orphan persona, a name I know many are lukewarm on, helping Batman. Now comes the easy part. I see. And so we see Cassandra vision, how every little tick of body language is translated to intent and reason before her eyes. In Batgirls, this was shown as her seeing emojis, which didn't really convey the extent to which she's reading people as she does. Weak knee. Strike here. Everything. Kneecap fracture. In a fight, reading body languages is a gift. Words may lie, the body never will. Well, maybe. I guess we'll let Cassandra have this for the sake of the DC universe. The thing is, I can't turn it off. Crinkled eyes, bouncing elbow, open shoulders. Conclusion, excited. Hey, Cass! Tension in jaw, hunched shoulders, legs pressed together. Conclusion, something's wrong. 
What's wrong? Nothing. I'm good. Cassandra pushes and gets the answer out of Steph that she overslept and missed an exam and might need to redo the whole course. All I wanted was to not think about it for a while, but I guess that was just too much to ask. Steph is too upset to stay for movie night. Slump posture, heavy footsteps, slow movements. Conclusion, hurting. I hurt her. I see everything. But sometimes I wish I didn't. Barbara seeks to console Cassandra, coming to sit next to her on the couch in some nice panels that highlight realistic couch transfer. You're part of a family of detectives. We all see too much. It's all right, Cass. My father taught me to see, not speak. Cassandra worries that ultimately maybe her father was right, that all she's good for is being a weapon and hurting people. So Babs takes her to a mirror and makes her look at herself. Alert gaze, scars, calloused hands, balanced weight, fighter. Conclusion, dangerous someone made for hurting. Want to know what I see? I see someone strong and determined who forges her own path no matter what anyone else says. I see someone who loves fiercely and who would do anything for her friends. I see my friend, my sister, someone I trust with my life and legacy. I see a hero. Trust with my life and legacy. That's so powerful given both their histories. Such a small thing, but it carries so much weight and so much past continuity with it. Honoring it, cherishing it, bringing it forward into this new format so that new people can experience it and enjoy it. All of this in a way that builds both characters up. It doesn't need to be a huge pontificating speech to get something across. Short, sweet, and poignant. Thanks to Barbara's words, Cassandra is able to see herself differently and feels better about herself. And of course her and Steph make up, because really Steph was mad at herself anyway. And they still have their movie night. Chapters like this really showcase how you can take a break from constant humor and not sacrifice the overall fun tone a series has. No one would accuse the series of being dark or gritty just because it has some chapters that veer more into the emotional. I mean, that's not true. I'm sure someone would, but it would be a pretty difficult argument to make out there somewhere. Someone's going right now. Challenge accepted. We did a whole video on Batgirl, so I'll just leave a link here in the description, not right here on the screen. Why would I do that? Babs is a great mentor in this chapter also, mature and kind, and it doesn't take away from her being their friend, on their level, or having fun with them. Professionalism and maturity aren't things to be afraid of. Embrace them. That was my mom moment for the day. Maturity. But speaking of being silly, here are some lighthearted chapters. These ones just make me smile. Most of this series just makes me smile though, so it was hard to pick some faves. Chapter 34, Recovery. This one is where Bruce is injured and has to stay in bed, so the entire Bat family sets about keeping him there as he tries to escape. This panel of him repelling out of Wayne Manor, he just has so much joy. And then there's Tim waiting right at the bottom. 22, the tournament, where the Bat Kids compete to avoid an embarrassing dare punishment, which that year is having to wear the Disco Wing costume. My favorite part of this one is Dick trying to defend the costume. What's embarrassing about that? It's great. 23 and 24 is a two-parter where Damien tries to make some friends at school and has to reach out to his siblings for help. It's very sweet. A nice detail is him calling Stephanie. They did do some bonding in her Batgirl series, so it was a nice callback. I just remembered one issue, but I didn't write it down, so I'm just gonna do it off the cuff, but it's the Christmas issue where Batman is going around and seeing what all of the children are doing because none of them are at the manor. And he has all of them on his phone because he can track them, and <laughs> which is a very Batman moment. And he has Jason there still under his Robin symbol. I don't know. It's just very cute. Very sweet. <laughs> Back to things I actually wrote down. Chapter 38, SOS, is a very silly outing about Bruce not knowing how to tie a tie without Alfred. So he calls the Watchtower, and for me the highlights are the various leaguers trying to instruct them. Batman, can you hear me? What's wrong? Superman, perfect. How do you tie a tie? You what? Doesn't Alfred know? Bruce and Clark arguing like an old married couple. Hal trying to show them with his ring. It's fun, but it's also a good segue into some of the things that people don't really like about this series or may not like. For some, it's just all too silly. And for as many deep, nice character moments as there may be, you also get some where the characters just act immature or dumbed down for the sake of the joke. Some don't care for that. There is also the fear that some feel the characters are flanderized or worry they may become so. Flanderization is the term coined for when a certain character's essential traits are slowly over-exaggerated and this until they can become a parody of their starting point. Some also wish that there were some more longer interconnected chapters, as they feel that given the strong characterization, it could work, or there are some ideas that people just want to see extended. Others worry that this series may fall apart, or some cracks would appear should the format change. Some characters fare better than others, and it definitely has found its stride as it's gone on. An early, less complete outing that comes to mind is the Duke Thomas-centric three chapters crush, where Duke gets a girlfriend and breaks up with her, all in three issues. 
It also has this panel with Stephanie wearing a fake mustache as a disguise, which is funny, but maybe an example for some is too silly. That relationship is pretty generic, but some are just happy to see Duke get some love and focus. Main DC forgot Duke hard. And of course, if their characterizations feel off for the reader at base level, then this entire series may just feel very frustrating. Or it may be mad to you, not listing a strong response one way or the other. On another note, I've seen people asking for recommended readings for comics through this webtoon, which is awesome. Synergy. While some may wait to see if it ever gets a traditional printed release, not wanting to do the digital reading. I'm very much enjoying the series both for what it is and also for the interesting analysis points that it provides. The way you can examine the webtoon format against the regular DC Comics format, or which characterization or what parts of the history are being brought forward and cherished. It's especially fascinating to me when you have these instances like highlighted here where the series has approached the same topics in different ways. Something many will have different opinions on, different strokes for different folks. Hopefully whatever you're reading, you're enjoying it. Life is too short to have more angst than you can avoid. That makes sense, I think. But those are just my thoughts and I wanna hear yours. Are you enjoying Wayne Family Adventures? Have a favorite chapter? Reading something else? Tell me things down below. And while you're down there, please roll the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking this time of your day to spend discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.